coming up. We have a great success. Yes! Yes! Oh, we've got lots on the camera, boys! Hello, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Menace Rides. In this episode, we hopefully finally get this roof of this Peugeot 308 CC to work with simply replacing a window motor regulator. This guy. Now, I had a lovely subscriber tell me how to get this out, so stay tuned, watch this episode, and let's see if this window motor fixes our roof and our window issue. So like I said in the intro, we are going to be replacing a window motor regulator in the Peugeot 308cc which we believe to be faulty and I'll show you why. On the inside of these there is a, let me just light it out, that's your window regulator. Obviously it's multifunctional, that's your little PCB board and I believe it to be faulty because these should have multiple functions. So when you press the roof to open, this should tell the window to drop a little bit and close again, and I think it's just faulty. So what I've done is, with one of my lovely subscribers, they've told me that I don't have to replace the complete window regulator uh, and motor. I can just do the, the motor unit. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one of these as a separate unit on eBay or the interwebs. So I managed to just get the whole thing, and I'm going to show you how I've stripped this from the one I've purchased because it's difficult to show you in the actual vehicle. So let's have a look. Hopefully they have delivered the right, the right thing. Took a while to get to this point, guys. So I'm super, super curious to see if this is gonna fix our roof and hopefully help you guys out there. All right, so there we go. Hopefully that's the correct unit. We can compare the module numbers ending 03580, 03580, Bosch Alveep, Bosch Alveep. Looks to be exactly the same, guys. So basically this is the complete window regulator and motor setup. That's that. Normally sits something like that in the vehicle. There we go. So it's sort of like that. And then these guys connect to your window and they slide your window up and down. And you can see where the glass is broken on this one. That's where it clips to your glass. And this is your slider that goes with a cable and gets your window up and down. Now what we've managed to do in the door is from behind without seeing anything, I've managed to undo these three torx bolts and without removing the regulator remove just the motor so that's this guy let me show you the space we have to work with it's just a little torx t25 i think so basically once your door card is off you got this space here i'm trying my best not to break this polystyrene insulation um, this motor then sits behind the window regulator. Again, it's a horrible space to see, but it sits behind there and in there. So you've got to try to remove those three torque screws um, blindly. These three little guys sit behind there, window motor goes in there, and hopefully that does the trick. So I'm going to strip that one down quickly and pop that in here, and hopefully that fixes our window and our roof and I just hope it works. Alright guys, so I got the three Torx T25 out. Now the idea here is to sort of stabilize your motor and actually pry it out of its housing spot and that's exactly what I had to do on the inside of that door and it does work if you get a little flat screwdriver in at the same time which I'm gonna have to do just to release that there oh, it's coming all together 
want to damage the regulator, somebody might be interested in this thing. There we go. Pop that off. Simply three little T25 screws. Now, uh, it's off to the difficult spot. Try get this in at the back of the actual regulator. Yeah. I think once we got our first one in, we'll be happy. <laughs> That's gonna slide behind there, guys, and then it's just a real struggle to just find your little, your three fixation points, get your screws in, and tighten up. Okay, I'm gonna try my best. Alright guys, so uh, a little bit of niggling about. Obviously you've got to get your hand behind there with a screw. Um, have yourself have yourself a little magnetic cage in case you do drop the screw just to fetch it at the bottom there because it does happen. Um, I've got one screw in place. It wasn't the most difficult thing to do. I have also, I forgot to mention to you, there is a size 10 that holds the actual window regulator system. I'll loosen that to get space to get that in and I'll put that back. I've got one screw in. I'm going to plug this in. What do you think, Tommy? Go for it. I've only got one screw in. I'm going to plug this in because I really want to know if there's any difference or where I stand with this. I hope one screw is going to hold the setup together and we don't slip. Uh -huh. Something happened. Yeah, I watched it drop. What happened? It dropped. Because the door's fucking open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw in my other episode, I even bought a new handle thinking the sensor was going on this because it wasn't doing anything. <laughs> uh, do I leave this on there, Tom? Yeah. Just leave it, yeah. That's exciting. I'm so, I'm so nervous, bro. Okay, our battery is connected. Guys, even if... Even if the roof isn't working and that window starts acting the right way, we're one step closer. But I want this roof to work. Eh? I want this roof to work, Tommy. It's gonna work. Ignition on. I'm gonna start it because I know this battery isn't the greatest. Eh? Go. Right, I'm gonna come your way, Tommy. You stay in. Okay. I don't wanna test the roof yet, okay? No, that's fine. I want to see if this window drops. You're going to be in the car, you're going to hold this. Yeah, put your hand on that. Here we go, window dropping, boy. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Bro. Tommy's got a remote control window <laughs> closer, boy. Yes, I love it. All right, so that's sorted that out. Okay, I'm going to close this door. Close it. Move, move the stuff off the back. <laughs> Moment of truth. That's positive, boy. You know what's the next test? Go on. If this can operate that window, then that then my theory was right about that window motor. Thing. Even though here we go. <laughs> I can open and close that window with this one. Okay, okay. I'm going to close all these windows. Because <coughs> I'm in the cockpit of an awesome driver's seat that's full of mold, yes. I love it. For now. Okay, now we've got the master window control, Tom. They never work, this guy. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do all the windows with one button because it's the master. Oh yes, look at your window, Tom. It's working. And it's working so smooth thanks to my eBay purchase. The windows are working. Moment of truth. I need to do this roof, Tom. Just go for it. This the guy I bought this from struggled for months to get this roof working. Okay. He's a subscriber. Oh, falling roof mechanism faulty. But I never got a signal before. Okay. I never got a signal before. Okay, good. So at least now I can plug in a diagnostic and actually see what that fault is. 
let me complete roof maneuver because that could just be a little micro switch so if i push there folding roof mechanism faulty what's this thing why would it be faulty now okay okay i'm pressing it closed nothing happens i never ever got a signal I might just need to do a manual roof maneuver procedure. Guys, if you've watched our other videos on how to do the coach position and then a roof reset procedure, it's basically what I might have to do. I just get all the micro switches to open and close, and then she might actually work. Should we do that, Tom? Let's do it. Huh? Let's do it. I've got to remember the procedure. We need a tool. Because you unlock here, guys. You unlock here. Can't see his top. Okay, let me put a light on it. There we go. You got your sensor master screw. You need to undo the hydraulic screw, pressure screw at the back in the boot. Once that's free, it'll allow the hydraulic fluid to flow forward and back. Once that's done, there's a screw here that unlocks these. Ah, uh, this light. It unlocks these two latches, so there's a latch here on the right, there's a latch on the left. That gets undone manually here, and then we can manually open this roof all the way into the boot, manually close it all the way, hopefully click all the micro switches, you know, and reset this roof. But I'm super happy, the window's working, and that allows us to diagnose it and possibly just reset this. You know what? I don't know if the roof works if the bonnet's open. Okay. There could be some. Guys, we just I'm gonna close that bonnet, switch off this car, start it again, and see what happens. Alright, so with the bonnet closed, Tommy and I did try the roof mechanism. It doesn't want to work, it's not doing anything, but at least now we are getting a message on the center dash console, which we weren't getting before. We replaced that window motor. Uh, it's a couple of days later. We did a manual reset. I'll put a link to that in the video above here to our previous video series where we show you how that's done. Um, I'm now desperate and I'm at the point where I want to actually replace the hydraulic motor. So if we come in here, basically you remove everything from your boot guys. This is the motor that controls your two arm flaps. That is connected to the pump and the motor. We're not getting any noise from this pump. I have got a spare pump though and this was purchased for my previous Peugeot in thinking that that one was faulty but it wasn't and I know that this was a working pump so Tommy I think we're gonna disconnect this pump quickly and get that replaced huh? okay so if you have a look here what we're gonna do first is just relieve the pressure from the hydraulic system that's this brass screw here at the top this is the same screw that you would do a quarter turn only, not more. You don't want to damage it. There we go. That relieves the pressure and that's the same bolt that you would unscrew for the manual maneuver. So we unscrew that. There's three electrical tabs. One, two and three. This one simply just clips out from the top here. Don't hurt yourself again, Mario. Oh, there we go. There's that one. And then we need to different size Allen key. Get to those two bolts, but I think we'll do all the electricals first. There's one. And there's the other one. I'll just double check all these tabs make sure there's no obstructions or anything that looks peculiar let's see the ECU and that like I said guys we're not even getting a noise from this pump it's like it's getting no power sort of scenario we did plug in the diagnostics again and we can't find a fault let's just get this out of the way this can be a little bit of a messy story but we are going to be cleaning this car so basically all your hydraulic lines are in a manifold they are numbered the cables are numbered and they are numbered throughout the car so you can always if you need to replace your hydraulic cables they are numbered there are going to be o-rings in here guys 
So we've just got to be very careful on the reassembly of that. But that's basically it. So what we'll do is we'll take our new one, our new second hand. There we go. Excluding the manifold. That's where your manifolds are going to sit. And then we will possibly top up on our hydraulic fluid. But I'm just hoping we get a noise. You know, something must happen here, guys. Without that, this roof. Maybe we just weld the roof closed, guys. And we just sell it as a coupe. Special edition. Special edition, one of a kind. One off, guys. We can get more money for a one off, huh? Peugeot 308C. <laughs> Not a 308cc, it's not a convertible coupe, it's just a coupe. Hey Tom? Damn straight. We just weld all this, take all the, <laughs> take all the stuff out of here. It's a nice car either way, whether it's convertible or not. <laughs> Maybe we just go buy a second hand sunroof. Damn straight. Get that wired in separately. <laughs> Still convertible then. <laughs> At least you can open the top and see the the clouds. Damn straight. So we get a suntan on your forehead. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna pull out these. That's the bracket that holds all of these and this actually keeps them all in alignment of where they need to be. You might need a pliers to pry these out but that's it. There we go. One out. You gotta just get all of these guys out of here. Don't worry about orientation because the manifold keeps that at bay for you. But to take reference, we now know that number 11 is on the top left. So we can't get the orientation incorrect. Okay, so that's it. You just got to pull all these guys out. I'm going to get a little pliers on you. There's another one out. I'm going to leak hydraulic fluid. I'm going to get a piece of plastic under you. Wait, let me just use this. At least this will absorb it. Slide that underneath our little pump just so we're not making a mess with all this hydraulic fluid. Keep it tidy. Here we go. That is a little bit of a finagly job. Here we go, another one out. You sort of work your way from the top to the bottom and you expose another one. Grab that one. Pop it out again. Like I said, there's little O-rings there. You just got to be mindful of. Make sure they don't stay behind and that they all stay on their respective hydraulic line. You know, it's the worst thing, Tom. Come on. If we get this roof to work and then all of a sudden there's hydraulic leaks all over <laughs> on the line. Oh wow. Why? Why would that be though? Excess pressure. Okay. Worn out seals on your hydraulic push arms. Okay. Hmm. All right, old pump. Old pump goodbye. Basically what happens is this is an electric motor that drives the hydraulic system. That electric motor can fail. And if it's shorting to ground, we could have a problem. So we're just gonna eliminate this pump. Put that somewhere. You know, the bench test on it with 12 volts possibly, but we've got a pump, so we're putting it in a new one. Oh, new second hand, and we know it works though. So. Oh, it's the repeat process and that's just get everything back in. It's our filling screw if you guys need to ever top up your hydraulic fluid. That's the bolt you need to undo. Yeah, that's nice and tight. What size is that? So maybe a 12? Yeah. yeah. No. No. It's not a 12. Maybe a 13 or a 14, eh? Okay, there we go. 13 size. Let's see if we can get in there with that. Wait, where's that other thing? You don't you need them things off the top? No, you this. Do. The things that go on there. Yeah, we're going to have to put the relays back on. Yeah. Just a bit of a top up for what we've now 
missed the is a guard line. Go more. Can you see it? Tom? I can see it, yeah. You're below minimum. Keep going. Keep going. You're just on the minimum line now. Halfway. And there. max. There we go, guys. We're on the max line now. That's pretty good. Happy with that. Make sure your wash is still good. That looks good. Little o ring. Start it by hand so we don't thread it because it is brass into plastic. Always by hand. Get as far down as I can. And then just the slightest little nip once you've bottomed out. Bottoming out and just buttoning up. Okay, so not too bad. You guys have now learned how to fill up your hydraulic fluid and to replace your pump. Now we plug in the electrical, get everything out of the way and see what happens. Let's get instructions. Plug in our electrical. Again, you can't get these electrical tabs wrong. <laughs> they color coded and they only go one way. So it's gonna be one way, one hallway. We're gonna gonna weld the roof closed, Tommy. <laughs> Why did that make a noise? Because it's got those O rings, the weather seal strips there. Eh? Oh wow. And then I just pushed out the air like a. That's smart, I've never heard that before. Plugging in a electrical component. component. Jeez Louise. Okay, and leave it all loose, and then, like I, like you said, we need to just tighten up on the air screw. Did I? I did. I just I didn't know oh, if it had no, been loosened. This is the it's, other part. It is the new one. Yeah, I just didn't know if it had been, so I just thought yeah. I'd let you know. No, that's good. <coughs> leave all the Allen keys and the grub screws and everything else. Yeah, we're gonna start the engine, guys. We're gonna give this a go. See what errors we get. And hopefully, this roof works with a new pump. What have I done? Well done. <laughs> Tommy's learning. Eh? Tommy's learning. Parcel shelf <laughs> needs to be closed. Is it the micro switch there? That didn't feel good though. What's happening here? It's because obviously that thing's not on there, is it? So that would like... It's just rubber. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Something's stopping us. <laughs> that didn't feel nice. Obviously you have to take this plastic trim out that was done off camera. It's literally like four screws, guys. But this. Rubber needs to be back in place so the boot can close properly. Okay, well, we're not worried about that right now. It's one of the closes. I mean, we haven't changed anything to do with those. No, it might, it might just be because this bit's not on there. Hmm. Let's try that again. Right. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit of hurrah. Just <laughs> right. So now we're hoping to hear something happen in the back. Just uh, to go. We've got our loose little roof control button. Okay, at least it's saying something now. Folding roof mechanism faulty. You, could this also be from a faulty battery? The car's running. I know if it's in Econo mode, it's not opening. Okay. And what I mean by that is if the battery voltage is too low yeah. and the car engine is off. Yeah, it won't. It won't. Okay. Okay. Right, we're gonna plug in a diagnostic quickly see if we can see what's happening here. Otherwise I'm lost for words guys. Right, we'll be back with you. Alright guys, so with us not coming right with this Peugeot, I resorted back to the top don. That's the diagnostic tool. 
and I realized something on the screen. It said that the right hand side jointed cover switch was in the closed position but I realized on the left hand side jointed cover switch position it was showing closed so I realized there must be an issue with that because they both should be in the same position at the same time because the roof works the same whether it's left or right and look what I found I found a micro switch there's actually this is the jointed cover they talk about there is a micro switch to let the system know when this cover is up or closed but then there's a separate switch that sits here that tells the roof ECU once this whole mechanism this is the coach position guys once that whole roof mechanism has closed and made contact this side so I came over to the switch and I found it in pieces yeah I have got a spare micro switch it's a spare one it's how it should look the problem is my connecting tabs are on the wrong side there is a left and right version so I might just hardwire that one in and see what happens otherwise I'm gonna tr I don't know if that can be repaired I'm quick yeah so I'm gonna try to sort out this micro switch you can actually see that somebody Here's the other half. Somebody had previously glued this together. There's a little bit of remnants of the super glue. And then I did find it with a little bit of duct tape around or insulation tape. So, yeah. Somebody's had their hands in here. I'm going to replace the switch. And hopefully, all our problems with this dusty, dirty, fantastic Peugeot 308cc comes to an end. I'm going to sort out the switch and see where we're at. All right, guys, in an attempt to get this roof working, I am now fabricating my own external, if you want to call it, micro switch. So the micro switch is going to be operated externally. Okay, so I'm just soldering up some wires when it's together. You're going to see what I mean. Uh, hopefully this works. Right guys, this is what's happening. I'm making my own micro switch. Have a look. I stripped the switch open. It doesn't look great for now. I've pulled the wire out to the top. I'm sure you can see that. I've pulled the wire out at the bottom. So that's basically a normally open position at the moment. And I've turned the actual press stud, this guy here, into the switch. So now I've got a wire soldered onto the bottom of that. For the closed side of the switch and when this press tab makes contact with that tab we now have an open closed scenario I'll show you so if we have a look there second one from the top guys closed open closed open I'm getting a continuously continuously good signal so copy paste that side get these guys back in and hopefully our roof works what a what a story right guys it's probably about eight o'clock on the tuesday evening i've uh, packed away all my soldering gear here we go i've uh, done these little micro switches my own kind of way you're not going to see it now with it's the one on the folding thing here and the folding cover this side Again, I've done my own thing there. If this doesn't work, I don't know what else will. I've got my little Allen key ready in my pump. Uh, sorry, you guys. The lighting is horrible, but okay. Anyway, I'm going to close it up. It's time to go home anyway. I'm going to give it a test. Put the car idling. I got the top down connected and streaming all the switches. I uh, hope you can see that. Now I've got the status of the joint cover switch deployed right inside open as well as the left. They weren't in conjunction with each other before. 
restarted this so I'm gonna I'm gonna try this it's a roof button something's happening I hear the motor guys I hear the motor Yes! Yes! Oh, we've got lots on the camera, boys! Tell me, my boy, if you're watching this, it was those two marker switches, bro. Look, I'm open to the elements. I'm in a convertible. Yes! 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 It's taking me so long to get to this point, guys. I can finally stop putting this thing back together. It's not going to happen in this episode. It's late. I'm just making sure it can close again. We are busy closing. And my camera light's gone now. I'm just so amazed. Windows up. Roof maneuver complete. That's a wrap. Yes. We've done so many trials and errors. We've done the window motor. We've done the, we had to do the uh, high speed fan relay switch. We had to keep the car connected to power because we're draining the battery the whole time. Guys, I hope you've liked this. I hope you've learned something. And please, if you've watched it till the end, like, share, subscribe. It's the way we keep going with these projects. And I'm gonna have to butter this thing up and then uh, show you what it looks like when I'm done with it. Peace.